Let us pray. God of truth and wisdom, Jesus, your living word confronted those who stood against him with your truth. Send us your Holy Spirit to hear your truth again in his story. Inspire us with his courage and conviction that we may love you more fully and serve you with wisdom and truth. Amen. Which Canadian sports team are you a fan of? The Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Raptors, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Edmonton Oilers, the Toronto Blue Jays? But are you a royal, are you a loyal fan to the team or to a particular player? What about fan gear? Do you have fan gear? Shirts and hats and foam hands and, and, and stickers on your bumper, on the bumper of your vehicles? Is there a cheer you do at games? Is there a particular thing that you say at a game? friend of mine was is a fan of baseball and so he always talks he always says Oscar wee wee whatever that means and I guess in the mood of the game it sounds like a wonderful it makes it's a wonderful way to participate but are you a loyal fan or a fear weather fan a fear weather fan is a fan who only supports the team when the team is winning and when they're not then they're not. It is Passover day, one of the largest celebrations in Jerusalem and people were out in large numbers doing their large preparations. Imagine this time, this main event in this Passover holiday. It was a time for eating, kind of like Thanksgiving. And so in this holiday, they would have this meal called the Haggadah. And in the ha have this meal, and in the meal, they would say this prayer called the Haggadah, which is to repeat the words in Exodus over and over. And during that time, they were also forbidden to eat leavened food products, so they wouldn't eat bread or pasta. And the reason for this is because in their mind, when they were leaving Egypt, they didn't have time to wait for the bread to rise. So instead of eating bread that has risen, they eat unleavened bread. For many Jews, the process of preparing for the Passover involved cleaning every corner of the home and removing all leavened products that were laying and that were laying around, and then laying out the meal. And the cedar meal was made up of bitter herbs like horseradish salt water to symbolize the tears of the slaves, a sweet paste of fruit and nuts to symbolize the mortar that the slaves used to build the pyramids. They had a shank bone to represent the Passover sacrifice. They had a hard boiled egg symbolic of life and birth associated with the spring season. They carried a leafy vegetable like usually lettuce to symbolize hope and redemption. So you think about lettuce a little bit differently when you recognize that in, in the Jewish culture and when it is used in the cedar meal, it symbolizes hope and redemption. And they would be required to drink four cups of wine throughout the cedar. Palm Sunday, as the Passover, is a day that they celebrated and they celebrated their exit from Egypt. We celebrate Palm Sunday as Jesus' entry into Jerusalem to complete the work that he came to do. So recognizing that it was time for him to fulfill his purpose, Jesus enters Jerusalem on this day. John tells us that the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. And a large crowd of Jesus' fans who were in the city decided to stop what they were doing and go out to meet him. In fan-like fashion, they went out of the city gates to meet Jesus with the equivalent of fan gear. They took palm branches to wave. 
in Matthew's version, some people spread their cloaks on the roadway while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The palm branches were considered symbols of victory and triumph in that time. So by waving their branches at Jesus as he rode past, they were declaring his victory, calling into being his reign as king. They were pronouncing a blessing on him as he rode in to take his seat on the throne and save them from the Roman leadership and the restrictions that the religious leaders imposed spreading out their garments for someone to walk on was more than an act of chivalry. It was a show of deference and honor. Spreading garments out for someone to walk on was an act of submission paid to royalty. As fans do, these actions came with cheers of hosannas and cheers of praise, hailing him as king of Israel. As fans of Jesus, they were willing to give the shirt off their backs to aid in his success. They were willing to make a personal sacrifice to support Jesus as he led them into a freer and fuller life. In their acts of palm waving and laying out of coats, they were making an emotional investment of hope in Jesus to win the battle ahead of him. He would gain victory over his opponents. For the religious and civil leaders of the time, the actions of the people seemed like they were changing loyalties. Like many of us fans, what they were showing was not loyalty, however. It was not allegiance and it was not devotion. They were fear weather fans. Their interests, their enthusiasm, their loyalty waning at the first sign of loss or failure. In a sense, even Jesus' disciples did not become loyal fans until after the fact. So what does loyalty look like? Philippians 2 tells us that loyalty is about having a positive attitude and commitment to a cause. And in pursuit of that cause, a loyal person gives of themselves to aid in the achievement of that cause. A loyal person is humble. They are willing to do anything that is required that if it is done will produce the best outcome for the cause. When we think of being loyal fans, it is the loyal fans who sit out in the rain for hours to get their ticket. It is the loyal fans who spend thousands of dollars on tickets and season passes to games for their team, even if they're not winning. A loyal person stays around and stands up for the cause, even when things are not going well. So this Palm Sunday, I invite you to answer the question, am I a loyal or a fair weather fan? Am I a loyal or fair weather fan of Jesus? Am, am I a loyal follower of Jesus? And do I need to change loyalties? Well, let's go even deeper. When the people waved those palms and laid down those garments, even the disciples as they followed Jesus, they did not have a full appreciation of what Jesus was about to do. They had their own ideas of what victory was and what Jesus what would become as king. So I ask, what hopes do you have to lay down before Jesus? for him to address, lay them down. What do you need to lay down for you to have a deeper engagement with your faith? Sometimes pride prevents us from praying sincerely. Are you too proud to pray? Sometimes self-centeredness makes it difficult for us to serve sincerely. 
We only serve when it is convenient for us and when it makes us feel good. Are you too self-centered to serve? Lay it down. Are you too proud to pray? Lay it down. What do you need to set aside for Jesus to really be king of your life? For Jesus to really become the object of your devotion and commitment? Lay it down. What do you have to give to aid Jesus to enter the lives of those yet to know him? Lay it down. What do you need to stop doing so that you can give Jesus the time, the honor, and the praise that he deserves. Lay it down. In laying down these things, we can change loyalties. Laying down them means letting go of them and walking away to follow Jesus free from these things. We're invited to shore up our loyalty. Today, let us be loyal fans rather than fair weather ones. Giving our devotion, committing ourselves to walk alongside Jesus no matter what happens. To hold on to our faith, especially when things get difficult. Continuing to do our part so that God's will can be done as it is in heaven. Let us place Jesus at the center of our life and work, giving him the highest place of honor. And let us show our appreciation and gratitude for the sacrifice he made on our behalf. It is with that sense of gratitude that we are invited to this table. Come to the table, not because you must, but because you may. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come, not because of any goodness of your own gives you the right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would love to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Amen.